3A, we're going to be reviewing positive exponents. Our content objective is students will be able to simplify expressions with exponents that are positive and zero. So today we're focusing simply on positive exponents and zero. Our language objective is students will be able to explain in words the process of simplifying exponent problems. So you should be able to describe the steps to a partner, to a friend, or to a sibling. And our last but not least, why am I learning this? Well, it's important for real world problems such as representing the size of something very small, such as the diameter of a white blood cell. So here, let's go over some background knowledge. This is an example of exponential form. We would read it as three to the fourth power, where three is called the base. This is the number that's going to be repeated. And four is your exponent. This is the number that tells you how many times you are going to repeat your base. So here, I would show it like this, where three is re being repeated four times and we are multiplying in between every time. This is what you would call an expanded product. And here is what you would get once you evaluate what this is. So if you multiply it all out, you would get 81 and this is what you would do if they asked you to evaluate. Here in the instruction, it says rewrite as expanded products and then evaluate. So for number one, we have five squared. I'm going to take five and repeat it two times. Five times five is 25. Here is your expanded products and here is your answer evaluated. Number two, here is your base, here is your exponent. I'm gonna repeat two, a total of four times. I'm going to now evaluate it. Two times two is four times two is 8 times 2 is 16. So again, this is your expanded products, and here is your answer once you evaluate it. For number 3, number 3 looks a little different. Here are some parentheses, and I see a negative sign. Whenever your negative sign is inside the parentheses along with the number, your base is negative. So I'm going to be repeating a negative 3 a total of 3 times. So if I were to evaluate this, I would do negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9, times another negative 3, which would give me negative 27. So once I evaluate, I would get negative 27. So again, expanded products and evaluated. For number 4, notice again, my base is negative because it's inside the parentheses along with the number. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that negative 9 a total of 2 times. I'm going to multiply that out to evaluate. Negative 9 times negative 9 is a positive 81. Moving on. So now, just quick rundown of vocabulary. Exponential form looks like that when you have your base and your exponent in one form. Expanded products is when you write all the numbers out with your base and your exponent in mind. And then evaluate means you're going to multiply all of the numbers out. Here, we have a problem. We have this right here. We can read it two ways. We can say 7 to the second power, or you can say 7 squared. Both ways still means the same thing. It's 7 times 7. Here's another example where you can read it two ways. You can say 5 to the third power, or... 5 cubed. Either way you read it, you're still gonna, um, you still need to understand it means 5 times 5 times 5. So now let's get started on some examples. Here it says rewrite as expanded products and then evaluate. So I must follow instructions and do that the following. So I'm going to go ahead and write it as expanded products. My base is a negative 2 fifths because I know this because it's inside the parentheses. So I'm going to write it as negative 2 fifths times negative 2 fifths. So that's my expanded products. If I were asked to then evaluate, I'm going to say a negative times a negative is a positive. So my answer is positive. 2 times 2 is 4, and 5 times 5 is 25. So here is my answer evaluated. Now looking at number 2, number 2 is slightly different. My base is actually positive this time. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat a 3 sevenths, a total of 3 times. I'm going to write that 3 times. 
Now, if I need to evaluate, I would multiply this straight across. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Here, my denominator, 7 times 7 is 49, times another 7 is 343. So there are your answers. Moving on. So now we have multiplying with the same base. This again is also background knowledge. What you could do is go ahead and break down four cubed into an expanded product, which is four times four times four. I would do the same thing to four squared. So notice again, this is what you would call expanded products. And then I can count that I have one, two, three, four, five, where your base is a four and it's repeated five times. So that's one way of doing it, and that's a way that I would prefer you to show your work. So here is our exponential form. So now let's go ahead and try some problems on our own. Here, for number three, it says rewrite as a single base and exponent. So notice this time I'm not asked to write, um, to evaluate. So for things, first things first, I'm gonna look here. It says negative two, that is my base. It's going to be repeated four times. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four. Notice I used parentheses and I included my negative. Now that was represented for this. Here, I have to do negative two squared. Again, my base is negative. I'm going to repeat it a total of two times. In order to simplify, I'm going to say, well, first of all, the number that's being repeated every single time is a negative 2. I'm going to make sure I have parentheses so that I'm saying that my base is negative. Without the parentheses, it will be seen as positive. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that's going to be raised to the 6th power, and that is my answer. For number 4, first of all, this 3 doesn't have an exponent. I know it's being raised to the 1st power. So I'm going to go ahead and break that up as 3 times 3 bring this down as 3. So here, the number that's being repeated every time is a positive 3, being repeated 3 times. So that is my answer. For number 5, looking here, I have 1 half raised to the second power. So I'm going to go ahead and write 1 half, a total of 2 times. I'm going to multiply that by 1 half, repeated 3 times. So 1, 2, Three. So let's see. Well, first of all, the number that's being repeated every single time is a one-half. And yes, you're going to need the parentheses. I'll explain why in a second. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five of them. So that is my answer. Some of you are going to be tempted to write it as one-half without the parentheses. However, if you take a look here, what you're going to see is it seems as though only one to the fifth power is being I'm sorry, 1 is the only number being raised to the 5th power and not the 2. But if you see here, you clearly see 2 is also being repeated 5 times, and that's why we need to make sure we have our parentheses. They are very important. Without it, it will be marked wrong. Okay? So now moving on. Here it says, some more background knowledge, expanding products writing expanded products in exponential form. So here, let's take a look. What is our base? Our base is a negative two. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and say, okay, well my base is a negative two. And let's see, because it was negative, I had to make sure I had my parentheses. And if you even look, notice every single time I had parentheses. It was repeated four times, so that is my power. And that is it. So moving on. Here we have 7 times 7 times 7. We are asked to write the expanded product in exponential form. So what I'm going to do is say, hey, my base is a 7, and it's being repeated 1, 2, 3 times. So it's 7 cubed. Again, you can read that as 7 cubed or seven to the third power. Next one, here we have, let's see, what is our base? Well, it is a negative eight. 
with parentheses. Notice every single set has parentheses, and it's being repeated one, two, three, four times. So I'm going to raise it to the fourth power. So that is my answer. Okay. Now moving on. Now we're going to go over some more background knowledge with some special exponent problems. So here we have negative 4 cubed. So what you need to be very careful about is this. Well, first of all, you need to recognize that my base is this time positive. Otherwise, it would be negative um, parentheses here. So notice this is an example of a negative base, and this is going to be an example of a positive base. You would need these parentheses to show that it's negative. So what you would do first is do 4 cubed. And again, this 4 is positive, so that would be 4 times 4 times 4. But notice there's a negative symbol here. So I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around that and make sure I include my negative still. So again, another example. So here, what if I have a negative 6 squared? Again, my base is positive. Otherwise, there would be parentheses here. So I'm going to go ahead and write 6 squared as... 6 times 6. However, there's a negative on the outside, so I'm going to make sure I still have it here. So now let's try some examples. But before I do that, I want you to make sure you don't confuse it with this right here. This, your base is negative, so I would be repeating a negative 4 two times. So notice there's a big difference between repeating a negative 4 and just a 4 with a negative on the outside, so please don't confuse the two. So here it says rewrite as expanded products and then evaluate. So let's do that. Here I have a negative 5 squared, which means I will go ahead and first recognize that this 5 is positive. Otherwise, it would be parentheses around it. So I'm going to write it as 5 times 5. And then I would make sure I would distribute that negative. If I evaluated it, it would be 5 times 5 is 25. Bring down this negative. Whoops, let's make that a little bit neater. Negative 25. So here is my expanded product. Here is the answer evaluated. So for number 9, here my base is negative. So I'm actually going to be writing a negative 8 with those parentheses a total of 2 times. Negative 8 right there. So that's my expanded product, but if I evaluate it, negative 8 times negative 8 is a positive 64 because a negative and a negative, the signs are the same, so it would be positive. Okay. Moving on. Here it says rewrite as an expanded product and then evaluate. So I'm going to do some examples with you. First, I recognize that my base is positive because the negative isn't on the inside, so I'm going to write two fifths written twice because of that squared. And now I need to bring down this negative, so that's my expanded product. But if I was asked to evaluate, I'm going to do 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 5 is 25. But then you can't forget to bring down this negative, so that is my other answer. Same thing for number 11. 3 fourths is a positive base because the negative isn't on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat 3 quarters 3 times because that's the exponent. But I got to make sure I incorporate this negative, so I'm going to bring it straight down. That's my expanded product. Then to evaluate, I'm going to say 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, so that's my numerator. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, so that's my new denominator. But I can't forget to bring down this negative, and that would be my answer for once I evaluated it. Let's go ahead and do some more examples. Here, it says negative 3 squared times 3. Here, my base is again positive because there's no parentheses telling me otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and write 3 squared as 3 times 3, but I still can't forget about this negative sign, so I'm going to bring it down. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring down this 3 right here. So if I were to ask to rewrite it as expanded products, there I have it. But then if I had to evaluate it, well, I'm going to multiply it out. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, but i got to bring down this negative, so it's negative 27. Same here. 
My base is a positive one half since the negative is on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and repeat one half two times because of that squared. But then bring down this negative sign. And then I'm going to go ahead and break this down. I'm going to repeat one half three times. So one, two, three. So now I have a total of how many one halves? One, two, three, four, five. Got to bring down this negative. And again, notice I have to have those parentheses because if you write it like this, you're only saying that one is being raised to the fifth power and not two. So please don't write it like that. This would be your answer as an expanded product. But I'm not done. I'm supposed to also evaluate it. So let's multiply it out. One times one times one times one times one. It's just one. Here, I'm going to say two times two is four. This set, two times two is also four, so that would give me 16. 16 times 2 is 32. However, I also need to make sure I don't forget about that negative sign right out here. So it would be negative 1 over 32. So now we're going to go ahead and write these expanded products into exponential form. So first, what's always good to ask yourself is, hey, what is my base? Is it positive or is it negative? Well, my base seems to appear to be a 7, which is positive, And it's being repeated a total of 1, 2, 3 times. However, there is a negative out here, so I'm going to go ahead and include that. So notice, this is not the same as this. Because this would mean negative 7 repeated 3 times. And you can see this is not the same as this. So please don't think that they are. Now let's look at the next one. What if I have this? Well, I'm going to first say that I have a negative 8. And since every single set was negative and had parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But again, it's important that you understand in order to show that a base is negative, you need those parentheses. It's being repeated 1, 2, 3, 4 times, so let's raise it to the 4th power. But notice there's this negative out here that you can't forget about. So go ahead and put that just outside, and that would be the answer. So now here it says rewrite the following as an equivalent expression in simplest exponential form, then evaluate. So you got to make sure you do both. So exponential form is going to look like this. I'm going to go ahead and reduce and cross cancel. So I'm going to say, hey, I can do that by dividing both of them by 5, which leaves me with 1. Here is where I'm going to ask you to do a certain step. I'm going to ask you to always start with the fraction bar every time when you, have, when you start with the fraction here. Ask yourself, what are you left with in the numerator? Here it seems like I have 5 repeated twice, so I'm going to write that's 5 squared. In my denominator, I'm just left with a bunch of 1s. Anything, no matter how many times you multiply 1 by itself, it, you're always going to get 1. But since I'm asked to write in exponential form, I'm not done. I need to write that as 5 squared. And then if I evaluate it, I'm going to say 5 times 5 is 25. So these are answers. This would be your exponential form, and this would be evaluated. Moving on. So now let's do some more examples. I'm going to go ahead and write this in exponential form and evaluate. So 2 squared looks like that. 2 squared also looks like that. So here I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, I keep repeating that. And again, here's where I'm going to ask you to write it as a fraction, using that fraction bar. What's left in my numerator? 1. What's left in my denominator? 1. We would simplify this to 1. Guess what? This would be my exponential form and it being evaluated because we normally don't write 1 to the first power. Okay. Let's go ahead and try this one. Negative 2 to the 4th power, I'm going to write that negative 2 with parentheses four times. Then I'm going to repeat it uh, three times in my denominator. I'm going to now cross-cancel anything that I can. So here, dividing it by negative 2 will turn it into 1s. 
dividing it by negative twos, dividing it by negative twos, starting with that fraction. What's left in my numerator? Well, negative two is left. And again, we don't have to write it to the first power. And here, what's left in my denominator? One, we can't leave our answer like this, so we would write that as negative two. Do we really need parentheses? No, okay? But if it was raised to anything other than the first power, you'd have to, okay? And then guess what? This is my exponential form as well as evaluated. So that is my answer. So now I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to write 1 half repeated 4 times in my numerator, 1 half repeated 2 times in my denominator. I'm going to cross, cancel. Now I'm going to ask you to start with a fraction and say, okay, well, how many one-halves do I have? I have two, so that's squared. I have nothing in the denominator, so that's one. But we often don't leave answers simplified like that. You can take it one step further. You're going to have to say that's one-half squared. Evaluated would be one-quarter. So these are the two answers. So let's keep it moving. Now here, Negative 8, we write it once because there's technically a 1 here. Then we have to write it three times in our denominator. I want to cross cancel. And that's all I can do. So now I'm going to go ahead, like I asked you before, write it as a fraction. There is a 1 in the denominator this time. And here, how many negative 8s are there? There are 2. Making sure I include those parentheses. What's often going to happen for this one is students might accidentally just say negative 2 squared and be done. This is wrong, so be very careful. I'm going to go ahead and evaluate it. So it's going to be 1 over what's negative 8 times negative 8? 64. So here are your two answers. Here, let's go ahead and continue. 3 squared is 3 times 3. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3. I'm going to cross cancel. Now I'm going to start with my fraction and say I have a 1 in my numerator and I have a 3 in my denominator. So notice there's a difference. A lot of students without doing this step might accidentally put an answer of 3 which would be wrong. Okay. So let's keep moving to the next example. Here, I'm going to write negative 7 repeated four times. And notice I included negative 7 with parentheses every time. Repeat it four to seven times in my denominator. Cross cancel, which means I'm dividing them by negative 7, which is why I end up with 1. Here, again, I would love for you to practice writing as a fraction here, saying that I only have a 1 in the denominator, but I have negative 7 repeated three times. So this would be my answer. And again, if you don't do this step of writing that fraction bar, you might accidentally write your answer like this, which would be marked wrong. So be very careful. So now let's look here. Some background knowledge. We have some positive exponents and zero exponents. I'm going to go ahead and show you the work, and I want you to recognize, I want you to look for a pattern. Hmm. What's happening every single time, going from 16 to 8, 8 to 4, and 4 to 2? Well, hopefully you see that we're dividing by 2 every single time. If you're wondering why it's 2, maybe it's because our base is a 2. Okay, So, what would 2 to the 0 power be? Well, if you take this pattern and continue on, if I divide by 2, then 2 divided by 2 should be 1. Now, pay very close attention. A lot of students are going to be tempted to say, oh, 2 to the 0 power is 0. Please, that is not the case. If you look here, it is 1. So again, please do take this out of your brain. That is not true. Anything raised to the 0 power is going to be 1. So positive exponents indicate repeated multiplication. That's why we repeatedly multiplied. Okay. And a number to the 0 power equals 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is going to be 1. So now let's try some here. 3 to the 0 power. 
any number of raised to the zero power is one, so that would be one. Nineteen to the zero power, again, any number raised to the zero power is one. Here, negative four raised to the zero power. Well, my base is a negative number, but it doesn't matter. Raised to the zero power, it's still going to be one. For number 25, 10 to the zero power is just one. Here, is my base positive or is it negative? Well, it's actually positive because there's no parentheses. So what you would have to do is first look here. A to the zero power is one. Then you would have to bring down this negative and it would give me negative one. So notice the difference between 26 and 24. Okay, here my base was negative, it didn't matter, it's gonna give me one. But in this case, my base was positive, but I had to distribute a negative afterwards. Now for 27, you can go ahead and do order of operations, which means you simplify what's inside the parentheses first, and then do multiplication, which would be 12 minus one, which would be 11. But what's any number raised to the zero power? It is still one. So again, you need to recognize the difference between problem number 26 and problem number 24. Because I, I do anticipate some of you might confuse these two for each other, so be very careful. So now let's do some power to power. You did cover this in seventh grade, but let's review some of it. Here I have five cubed to the second power. You can do it two ways. You can go ahead and write it as an extended product and say, okay, well now that I have it, I need to repeat it two times. And you can see that you have a total of six of them, so you can write that as five to the six. So what's really gonna be nice is if you write it as an extended product, because then you can visually see how we came up with this six. Some of you are going to notice a pattern and wanna use that too quickly. I suggest that you write it as an extended product before you move on to that pattern that you see. So some of you might see it another way. Some of you might say, hey, I see five cubed. I can repeat that twice. So notice the difference between these two. So now I'm gonna go ahead and exp um, extend this out to say five repeated three times, and then once more, five repeated three times. But guess what? Our answer is still the same. Our exponential form will still be five to the sixth power. Now let's try out some problems on our own. So here we have three to the fifth power. What you're gonna to wanna to do first is write that as an extended product, three to the fifth power, which is three repeated five times. But because of this squared, I'm gonna to have to repeat this whole group once more to make two groups, which would give me a total of 10. So I have to write three to the 10th power. Now, what about number 29? Same idea. Here, my base is a negative two and it's gonna be repeated three times, so I will do that. But since it's being squared, I have to repeat this entire group once more, which would give me negative two with parentheses to the sixth power. Moving on. Now here, again, I'm gonna go ahead and extend this out to two cubed, written as an extended product. Here's my first group, but since I have it being squared, I have to repeat it once more to make a total of two giving me two to the sixth power. Let me show you what this would look like. I'm gonna go ahead and write this out as three squared. However, it is being cubed, so I have to have two more sets to that, giving me a total of three sets. So this would be three to the one, two, three, four, five, sixth power. Okay, moving on. Here, um, I'm going to break it down just a little bit more instead of writing ex, um, extended products so that you can see. Five to the six is being repeated two times. So there's once and there's twice. So if I have six here, and I have to write another six, I'm gonna have a total of 12 of them. What about here? I have four cubed written three times. So here's one, two, three. So let's see, I'm gonna write four as my base because that doesn't change. Let's see how much I would have. I would write three here, three more would be six, three more would be nine. I have a negative seven cubed, and it's supposed to be repeated twice, so I'm gonna go ahead and write it again, like so. So here, a negative times a negative will become positive, so I, I don't have to deal with that negative anymore. But let's see, I have a seven, and it's gonna be repeated here, three, 
three more times would be six. So notice this one became positive even though it, it had a negative on the inside here. Here, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this negative five squared right here a total of five times. So let's write that once, twice, three times, four times, and five times. So looking, well, first of all, my base is still a negative five because that's repeated over and over. Let's see how many we have all together. We have two here plus two more is four, plus two more is six, plus two more is eight, plus two more is ten. So that is my final answer. Thank you for tuning in, and that ends our lesson for today. Particular problem.